Good Saturday morning, everyone. Today on Perspectives, if you plan on voting on November the 3rd, we've got all the dates and information you need today to make sure that you're prepared to participate in the process. Well, this may be one of the most important elections of our times. It will shape the dynamic of the White House and the two houses of Congress. It's hard to think of any other American election which has been so polarized, though. The fight for equality seems as fervent and loud as it was in the 1960s. Protests continue across our nation. Folks of all colors standing arm in arm in the call for justice. And of course, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed all of our lives and it will still be a major challenge for whoever's in the White House. In addition to the race for president now, folks in Alabama will also be voting for a U.S. Senator. Republican Tommy Tuberville wants to take the seat from Democratic Senator Doug Jones. The first congressional seat will have a new representative as Democrat James Aberhard is running against Republican Jerry Carl. There are also several judgeships and amendments that will be decided. So it is important you make your vote count. Joining us today, Julie Castle and Rose Johnson of the League of Women Voters of Mobile. They are co-presidents of the organization. Robert Clopton, he is president of the Mobile County chapter of the NAACP and Ron Reams, a member of the Mobile County Board of Registrars. When we return this morning, we'll talk with the co-presidents of the League of Women Voters of Mobile as Perspectives continues in just a moment. Our guests now, Julie Castle and Rose Johnson. They are co-presidents of the League of Women Voters of Mobile. And ladies, 100 years ago, an organization came together to make sure that everyone played a critical role in the democracy by being a part of the voting process. And of course, here today in 2020, the League of Women Voters are still making a difference. Tell us, how does this day and time play into making a major impact when we hear some of the percentages of people who are not taking part in the process. Well, I would think that the centennial has given a lot of focus and visibility to people about the significance of the year, and hopefully that's ratcheted up visibility for the league and just more significantly the importance of voting. Eric, I want to say too, an interesting thing in our research is the league was actually begun to help women know how to cast ballots. I thought that was so interesting. So from a very practical point of view, early on, 1920, to show women how to get into the voting booth and what to do. Well, you know, when you look at that, as some other groups in uh, the American culture who were not able to participate at the beginning, do women see this as a very important opportunity to participate and that uh, they don't miss being there at the polls or do you still have to convince uh, certain groups of women that this is important? I don't think that we have to convince certain groups. I think everybody appreciates the significance of voting. Uh, what we are trying to do is just emphasize to everyone that it's important to get registered and to actually show up to the polls that every year is significant, but this year is very significant. And we want to be inclusive and have everybody possible that can register to vote to be involved and to be voting. The League is interested in educating people to the issues and encouraging participation. So we want to get as much participation as we possibly can. And let's get Julie in here. Julie, this has been a sort of an interesting year due to the COVID-19 and uh, sort of stopping people from doing some of the things that we used to do. How has this year been for the league as relates to reaching these other potential voters and encouraging those who are already registered? How have the activities been? Well, Eric, we have um, done some voter registration drives and basically drive through uh, registration drives where people could feel comfortable and and getting the information and getting their um, registration forms and um, applications for absentee ballots. And so we've been able to answer questions, look up information for them, and we have conducted several uh, throughout the last this past month and in September. 
Now, one of the things that you all have coordinated nationally has been a day of action called Women Power the Vote. Are we seeing a, a powerful block of women coming to participate in the process here in this state and in our area of Alabama? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And we had, um, we had planned, because it is a centennial year, some of our events got canceled as a result of COVID-19, but uh, we're hoping to um, get back on track in 2021. In other words, celebrating a hundred plus one year. Well, looking at a couple of things that you all are concerned about, according to the national organization, expanding voter access and fighting voter suppression. How is the Mobile organization attacking that here in Alabama? We've had a number of uh, members participate in a uh, voter vote restoration project whereby we are studying what's involved in screening someone, looking at past felony offenses, and in light of the 2017 clarification of crimes of moral turpitude, helping people actually get a certificate of eligibility to register to vote where they might not have known how to do that in the past. So we've been very excited to get that program going and matched by the excitement of those that are able to vote with the benefit of that program. Looking at the power of the woman vote, we do have uh, one of the four candidates that we'll be voting for in the upcoming uh, presidential election, a vice presidential candidate as a woman. Do you think women are going to look at that and saying that they want to put a woman in that position or it's just a, another candidate? Do women look at it like that to see the importance of putting women into the high office? Uh, yes, I do believe that people are looking at women and as uh, through the years women have uh, jumped in and put their name in the uh, to uh, vote uh, to run for office. So we're seeing a lot a lot of that but there is a lot of interest when there is a woman on the ticket. Um, but I would also say that I think women are also very clear that they want someone who's got the skills and the competence to do the job. I don't think it's a prima facie, we just want a female in there. I think peop women are discriminating in understanding you need to get the right person in the office to promote the, the, the values that you have. Well, looking ahead, do you think that the three of us will see a woman as president leading this nation in our lifetime? And what will it take to make that happen? I just think increased voter participation. If you look at the percentage of the population mm -hmm. that are women, you look at the percentage that are um, non-Caucasian, the, the demographics are shifting and I think that that opens up the path to, to non-traditional mm -hmm. candidates. So I'm, I'm encouraged about that. I think it's possible. Julie? I agree with Rose. Uh, you're seeing um, people that are very interested in the issues and and they're getting out there to vote and we have seen a lot of that through our drives and through our participation in our organization. We have grown in this past year and so people are out there and want to be involved. Well, ladies, we thank you both for being a part of the discussion this morning. Julie Castle and Rose Johnson, our co-presidents of the League of Women Voters in Mobile. And of course, we'll be showing information on how people can contact you and find out more, as well as uh, getting involved with your organization as well. Thank you both very much. Thank, thank you. you. And once again, Julie Castle and Rose Johnson, they are co-presidents of the League of Women Voters of Mobile. When we come back this morning, we're joined by the president of the Mobile County chapter of the NAACP. Perspectives continues right after this quick break. And our guest now, Robert Clopton, president of the Mobile chapter of the NAACP, a nonpartisan voter encouragement type of organization. And Mr. Clopton, the NAACP says on their national website that Alabama is listed as a 2020 battleground state and that voters in Alabama could decide the upcoming presidential election. How uh, are you seeing that and why are you giving that as a possible uh, suggestion that Alabama could make a difference? Well, first, Eric, let me thank you for being here this morning. And the mission of the NAACP is to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic uh, rights of all people and to eliminate race-based discrimination. And when we look at what's going on in Alabama right now as far as the polariz polarization, 
and the efforts of the NAACP, which is to inform, engage, and empower voters and make sure that they have the tools and resources they need to make their voices heard at the ballot, we are very optimistic about uh, the voter registration activities, not only of the NAACP, but other uh, nonpartisan organizations that we do partner with as far as um, um, registering voters. And we feel that we might can turn Alabama blue. We're very positive. Now, when you look at that versus uh, the difficulty of uh, both parties having equal opportunity to win in the state in the recent years, uh, do you see that in the presidential aspect or in possibly the senatorial? Well, let me look at the senatorial and probably even congressional. Uh, the downline seats are more positive than the presidential at this particular time. And we are nonpartisan from the standpoint that we have Republicans and Democrats. We do not get out here and advertise or campaign for anyone. But the thing is, we look at the people that are registered and going to the polls right now, we feel that a lot of those might be Democrats. And again, we do register Republicans and Democrats. One of the uh, recent polls says that a majority of black Americans believe that the elected officials have failed them. Are you seeing a resurgence, though, for this election of blacks coming to uh, make sure they're registered as well as already participating in the process since some of the early voting has begun? Well, it's not necessarily the blacks. It's everywhere. It's basically the millennials and Gen X. It's younger people are coming out to vote. They're coming out black, white, or all colors, uh, Hispanic, you name it. They're all coming up to register to um, exercise one of the things, which is their most basic right of a citizen in a democracy, and that right is to vote. Now, this program is airing just a, with a, just a few days left to register to vote because, of course, you've got to register to be able to participate on November the 3rd. Uh, what is happening in this community as it relates to making sure that people are registered by the upcoming deadline, which is uh, the 19th, actually, yeah, the 19th of October, correct? That's correct. October 19, uh, 2020 is the last day to register. Um, uh, the probate asks us and everyone in the state of Alabama to allow uh, 14 days to compile the uh, registration logs prior to it. Um, Eric, that's a good question that you uh, just ask about that. And what we're seeing, and we're taking advantage of, Eric, and we're trying to communicate to each and every one about absentee ballot. What we're seeing right now in Mobile is really early voting, but it is absentee voting. Whereas you can vote right now at the election office at 151 government, an absentee ballot in person, Monday through Friday. And for the next three weeks, October 10th, 17th, and 24th, you can vote absentee ballot in person, in person at the election office from nine to one o'clock on these next three Saturdays. All right, so we're going to make sure that communication is the key. So we want to make sure that people are registered, of course, and then involved in the process. Uh, as you give us a word here, what are you saying to people who say that uh, their vote doesn't count, doesn't make a difference? What message do you want to leave with them? <laughs> That's a tough one right there from the standpoint that I am, I am so adamant about voting. I try to uh, convey to them that voting to me is in line with breathing. We're breathing. Because uh, we look back at the sacrifice of so many people who battle for the right to vote. I owe them. I am fulfilling my obligation to them. And to the younger people, the people who feel that it doesn't matter whether they vote or not, I want to encourage them to, and I want to instill in them a right of ownership in the decision-making process. I won't be here long. I have fought this battle for so long. It's time to hand off the baton. And we try to encourage them to pick this baton up, the baton of freedom, the baton of justice, the baton of opportunity, the baton that every citizen in a democracy needs to carry. Robert Clopton, president of the uh, Mobile NAACP, we thank you so much for being a part of the discussion today. And, of course, they can go to your website for more information in preparation for the upcoming elections. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric.
Have a great day. Robert Clompton, president of the Mobile County chapter of the NAACP. When we return, we share the dates and information for voter registration and about absentee ballots. As we talk to a member of the Mobile County Registrar's Office, Perspectives continues in just a moment. And we're talking with Ron Reams, a member of the Mobile County Board of Registrars, who's here today to tell us those very important dates, Ron, that are coming up. In fact, uh, we've just got a few days remaining as we're working our way down to one of your first deadlines of October the 19th. Give us an idea of why that's important, and then we'll look at the other dates. Well, that, uh, Eric, is the voter registration deadline when we have to have everybody's registration in. And the reason we're doing that is because our staff and our members have to have enough time to make sure that all those names and their addresses and their proper precincts are put into the computer so we can print up those voter lists. You know, when you go to vote, they'll check your name off a list to make sure that you're in the right place. And uh, we have to print those ahead of time, of course. So we have to make sure we've got a lot of time ahead. I want to tell you, Eric, right now we are snowed under. We have so many registrations. It's amazing. I, I think we're going to have a, a record voter turnout out just because we've had a record number of registrations that already come into our office. That's good to hear. Now, Ron, let me ask you, when you talk about a, a record number, give us an idea of what the highest percentage has been in the past of eligible voters to actually cast that ballot. Well, it's been somewhere around 20 percent, believe it or not, and that, that really is very upsetting to me that we have people who are eligible to vote, who have taken the time to register, and uh, eight out of 10 don't come to, to vote. And they don't go to the registration, to the absentee ballot either. Uh, that's one of the things that I was gonna talk about next is the fact that we do have a deadline to ask for your absentee ballot. Cause you I tell you before, you, before you hit that one, hit real quickly for us though, the things that uh, they've gotta have to be able to register when they come to register to vote. Tell us how important that voter ID is. Okay, well, first of all, they have to be a United States citizen. That hasn't changed. If you are not a citizen of the U.S., you're not supposed to be voting. Uh, you have to reside in Alabama, and specifically, if you're voting in Mobile County, you have to live in Mobile County. Uh, you have to be at least 18 or older before or on Election Day. Uh, you haven't been barred from voting due to some type of disqualifying felony conviction, and you have not been declared mentally and competent by the probate court, for example. The uh, voter ID is something that is free and we uh, make it available to any voter. All they have to do is come to our office that is located down on Government Street. We're in uh, Suite 165 in what is commonly called the probate court annex, which is right next door to Government Plaza. We have one window open during this uh, COVID pandemic. So what we have to do is make sure that only one person comes into the office at a time. And uh, we haven't had any problems with that so far because most everybody is either voting or they're registering rather electronically or they're sending in their applications by mail. And what kind of identification do they need to bring with them to register the show Well, proof? it would be very helpful if you have your birth certificate. We need to make sure you have your birth certificate. And also if you have any type of photo ID from a government agency. For instance, if you were in the military and you have a picture of yourself on your military ID, you can use that. Or you can use a driver's license. But if you need a voter ID because you don't have anything with your picture, on it. That's why we have it set up that you can come in, but we definitely have to have that birth certificate to verify who you are. Okay, Ron, give us that date and importance of the absentee ballot because so many people are looking at that as their option now due to COVID-19. Well, the date for voters to make their application will be October 29th, and the last day that they can have it either hand-delivered or have it postmarked will be November the 2nd, the day before the election. Now, if you have any questions about the absentee ballot, I can't help you a whole lot with questions about absentee ballots. I'm here to talk about the uh, registration process. So let me give you folks a phone number if you have any questions or if you want to make an application for an absentee ballot. It's 574-6400. That's 
5-7-4-0-0. That's the absentee ballot office. Our phone number is 574-8586. Uh, one final quick question here. Where else can someone register to vote at this date other than at the registrar's office? Are there other places still available? Well, I can tell you that you can pick up a uh, applications at the license commissioner's office on Michael Boulevard, but the easiest way for people to register to vote is electronically. And what we tell people is they need to go to alabamavotes.gov and at that location it will take you to the Secretary of State's office and all you do is follow the prompts for voters or election. The other thing that you might want to consider doing is using your iPhone or your smartphone, go to the apps location, the app store or Google Play and look for Alabama Votes. If you'll put in a, a search for Alabama Votes, that will bring up an app that you can put on your phone and you can do all this by your telephone. All right. So that's the that's the main thing we want to get the word out that if you're waiting to the last minute and you're right on those deadlines we were talking about you might want to consider using your uh, internet or the app to get your registration in on time. Ron, we thank you so much for coming and sharing again this morning because um, a major election and, and we're cheering that that 20% that you're talking about we will gotta be have just more. busted <laughs> to the extreme because it's time for more people to participate. That's correct. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Eric. Ron Reams, member of the Mobile County Board of Registrars. Okay, now here are those important dates once again that you need to have. You have until Thursday, October the 29th to get a ballot request in to your local Board of Registrars. The return by mail ballot must be postmarked by Monday, November the 2nd for it to count. And if you're returning your ballot in person, it has to go to the absentee election manager of your county by 5 p.m. November the 2nd. If you live in Mobile County, the election manager's office will also be open on Saturdays for the next few Saturdays. In fact, you can get absentee ballot applications or other election materials. The office will be open on Saturdays from 9 in the morning until 1 p.m. Then on Saturday, October 31st, it will be open for voters to hand deliver their absentee ballots. Now, if you'd like more information on the League of Women Voters of Mobile, you can call the number you see there on the screen. It's 251-219-8563. The League is hoping to expand participation in every election and give a voice to all Americans. Coming up next on Perspectives, hopefully you've heard that if you haven't completed and turned in your census information by now, you only have 14 days left to get it done. The deadline was just extended to October 31st, and Alabama officials are pleading actually that everyone who received the census 2020 forms please complete the process. At last report, Alabama had one of the lowest turn-in rates in the nation. The census is conducted only once every 10 years, and a lot is riding on all of us to participate. Federal funding sent to Alabama to support health care, education, roads and bridges, senior and child care services, just to name a few, could be seriously affected. Now we'll talk to Mobile County Commissioner Masiria Ludgood and the Executive Director of the United Way of Southwest Alabama, that's Jill Chenoweth, to find out why the census is so important. Well, please join us here next Saturday morning at 8.30 for Perspectives as we discuss important issues and seek solutions. Now, if you have any ideas of topics that you'd like for us to address, just drop it to Perspectives at Fox10TV.com. I'm Eric Reynolds. Have a great week.